Welcome to another edition of Tom's Real Food Podcast. Today's podcast is brought to you by Tommy Spice. Granulated salt, granulated garlic, granulated onion, and granulated pepper. Let's get to the podcast. Everybody, welcome back. I am Tom Garber, the Keto Cook. Today on Tom's Real Food Podcast, we're going to be discussing something that I, I told you so, okay? It, it's not uh, a revenge thing. It's not anything like that. But uh, a few weeks back, a, a company that, that uh, sells a product to help you get your electrolytes back on a low-carb diet. Now, that's keto. could be um, kind of... I see a lot of people with carnivore using it and, and stuff like that. So, uh, my drift is flat out, they lied. <laughs> no other way around it. So, <clears throat> the bottom line is they said that there was uh, nothing in it uh, or a low low amount, a low percentage of uh, maltodextrin, all right, which is a sugar. Well, they did more research, and every, you know, and everybody's up in arms about it, or um, you know, all that is a little bit more in it than than what they first said. They had to go back and had an outside company uh, do the testing on it, and lo and behold, there was anywhere from uh, three fifty to five hundred fifty milligrams of this this uh, maltodextrin in it. All right, now <clears throat> my my view on it, I said from the beginning. Okay, six years. Do not, do not eat anything that says keto friendly or this will help you with your whatever. If you have problems with electrolytes, wet your finger, pour some salt out on the counter and eat the salt. Drink the pickle juice, okay, or have some vinegar. Uh, it, it'll, it'll bring up apple cider vinegar is really good for you to, to bring back your electrolytes. That's basically where it comes from, salt. So, <laughs> I mean... You know, like I said, well, you know, this stuff I don't know about because it's a process. And what I mean, what I mean by a process, there's a litany of different words that are pulled together in here that very hard to pronounce. Uh, and if you go looking them all up, then you got to go through all the rigmarole, what they're reading, um, you know, what you're reading there, and, and what does it mean? So it makes it kind of complicated to figure out exactly what it is. Now, I, I put... Up here, I will put up the chart again that I did earlier on in, when I first started this podcast. <clears throat> I've have, I have 74 different words, okay, uh, for sugar. I just looked it up again and it's close to 100 or maybe over 100 right now that they're using. Now, who allows this? Okay, well, the FDA allows it, the government. Of course, the government, you, you, know, you know, with the labels, now you have to post everything that's in, but it's a certain percentage that you have to put in in order to make it make it to the hit list for the FDA. All right. So, are there ways around it? Absolutely. Uh, does, uh, you know, big sugar or this and that have anything to do with it? I don't know. I don't do conspiracies. But it's very fishy about how most of these products are allowed. Okay. There we go. Keto friendly. Now, I can, I can, make, I can make up a dish... And say this is 100% keto friendly, and then you can, we can nitpick it. All right, uh, you know broccoli. Well, is it keto friendly? Well, there's only six carbs per cup in broccoli. Um, well, maybe you can have a, a yam or a sweet potato or something like that. Well, that's only carbs. So now we're we're 20 carbs under what we need to be having to be eating clean. That's also bogus because basically there's carbs just about in everything that we eat. Okay, like I said, basically. So, going going down the, the list of items and stuff, um, <clears throat> anything that comes in the box, okay, that's key, has a list on the back. And most of it, I mean, you can't pronounce half this stuff. So, they got caught with their pants down. They lied to everybody about it. Uh, now, if you use this uh, product and you're not a type 2 diabetic, well, continue using it. I mean, if it's helping you getting your electrolytes back and you're on a low-carb diet, you have no other issues, no bet, no metabolic problems, you don't have type 2 diabetes or or whatever, okay? Well, continue, okay? But in the long run, it's not going to help you if you understand what I'm trying to get through here. Now, I keep saying every time, nothing, no, any, if it says keto, walk away from it, all right? 
keto friendly, run from it because it's not. It's a play on words. Uh, they took a kind of a hit with the low carb, um, you know, diet plans and stuff that are out there, and they're trying to reel it, reel the people back in again. But they're marketing it different. I seen a. I'm not going to mention any names, but I seen a bag of chips. I think it was maybe eight ounces, if that. All right, seven dollars. So it's a money game. Okay, they, they're, they're preying on people who are trying to get their health back. All right, I applaud anybody who gives this a shot because it, it does work. I don't care what anybody says, it does work. Now, we are sugar addicted. I'll say that to the day I, they threw sand on me. I am, I am so worried about our younger generation that are coming up because they're younger and younger with high blood pressure, uh, type 2 diabetes right away. Okay, way overweight, way overweight. Okay, why? Sugar. There's no other way around it, but you know what? They don't talk about it because it's all about how many zeros are at the end of that check for sponsors and for everybody else that they're pushing the sugar on. So, as you can see, my, my stress level's going up, but that's okay. I'm trying to get the point out where <clears throat> using these, these products, there's another product out there uh, that... You drink it, and it's considered a meal. Okay. Uh, is that easy enough? Yeah. But remember Slim Fast? Okay. Remember some of mother, uh, the mother drinks, the weight loss drinks, and the shakes, and stuff they had? Well, some of the names that you couldn't pronounce, all of a sudden, causing cancer. Um, metabolic problems, okay, that they don't talk about enough, all right? Uh, you know, when, you, when you're doing, you know, keto and stuff, if you do it right, and you eat the right foods, clean, very clean foods, you shouldn't have a problem with any of this. So um, the, this element that, that was out there says that, guess what? You, you have this one here. Actually, it was another, another brand. If you use this brand here, it'll help you get through the keto flu. Well, okay. Well, what's the keto flu? Okay, that's when you're you're changing from glucose into into ketosis. That's what that's what what we're changing into. So you feel you feel different. You feel uh, like almost like you get you're getting sick. Okay, but that's a good thing. But now they're they're jumping on that, saying let's this will prevent that. Okay. Well, they lied to you once. Now they're lying to you about other stuff that's going to happen because it does not happen to everyone. So here's the big rub with this one here is is that they're saying that this stuff didn't exist. Or if it did, it was very low. Now, like I said, for a guy like me with type 2 diabetes, this could be, this could hurt. This could hurt me very much because, you know what, I'm taking this stuff. It's really good. It, it doesn't have any sugar in it or it doesn't have any of this, this, other, this other stuff, uh, multidextrin. doesn't have any of that stuff in it. Why is my blood sugar going up? Why am I getting headaches? Why do I feel bad? They lie. Plain and simple. Uh, <coughs> Going back to the metabolic syndrome, okay, if you start putting these suppressants in, I keep saying Ozempic, all these, all these other stuff, but now they got these shakes that you shake up, and I can see people at work that do it. Well, lunchtime, sh drink their shake down, they're full, and they go on about their business. What's the long-term problems? What happens later on? What happens with your, with your gut? Slowing down your, actually slowing down your processing uh, way of, you know, getting foods through. Now, all of a sudden, you put it to a halt. You filled up to, to the point where now nothing's moving, okay? And you go home, I'm going to eat, well, I don't feel good, I'm, you know, I'm going to wait. All right? And then until the next day, and then you do it again. You do this five, six times a week, all right? That's just as bad as a Zempic in my eyes. There again, I am not a doctor or a scientist. I am just living proof of <clears throat> eating clean and knowing, falling off the wagon, knowing what's going to happen to me, okay? There it is. I'm, I'm telling you. Uh, each time I go off the wagon, okay, uh, just like I said, I have another channel that I cook and I'll taste, I'll make some homemade pasta or whatever, I'll have a little bit and it affects me, it affects me big time, and I'm down for two two days where I feel like crap. So in the long run, to make a video, all right, about regular food, and I'm tasting it, it's not doing me any good, and I'm, I'm gonna actually going to get away from that uh, sooner rather than later. Um most of the people who use this stuff, um, they just, they just, they have a, they have a problem. They just, they just can't stick to, a, you know, just a regular, straightforward way of, of life, a life 
style change. And they'll make these, you know, keto cookies, uh, keto breads, whatever. And then all of a sudden, well, you know what? My electrolytes are off. Well, you're, you're mixing and matching uh, a lot of different s stuff now. Now you're adding sugar to it. Is it a lot? Here's my bitch. I am a type 2 diabetic. If I had this stuff or drank this stuff, it would throw me into a tizzy. Now, everybody says, well, it's just a little bit of sugar. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. And the other thing I keep going back to is these people that put these uh, the uh, monitors on, okay, glucose monitors, uh, and then eat. All right, two hours later, we're going to look at my phone. Oh, it didn't spike my stuff at all. You don't have type 2 diabetes, okay? It's not, all right? It's not going to hurt you. Uh, you're fa in fairly good, good health, and, you know, uh, well, this is good, so I, I'm going to say that eating this bread, this keto bread, didn't spike my glucose, so guess what? It's good. Bullshit. Sorry, bullshit. Um, and there we can see I'm getting my, my, my stress levels getting high. Okay, this is pod, podcast 18, and you see what tr triggers me. <laughs> it's all this nonsense. But this company got caught with the pants down. Uh, there's a lot of other um, keto channels, uh, carnivore channels, and they're, they're adding their two cents to it, uh, either because they're getting stuff for free, or they're being sponsored by this company. And if if you're saying that it's okay and it doesn't bother you, uh, well, you know, you're just playing, you're playing to it, okay? Uh, you're playing to the uh, mess that, that they they have started now. You got doctors fighting, you know, back and forth. So anyway, that's pretty much what I'm, uh, what I'm talking about today. Uh, please, um, eat clean. It's very easy to do, all right? Um, Today, I'm going to have a couple New York strip steaks, all right? We're going to have a little bro uh, broccoli with it, uh, and that'll be enough to carry me into the evening, um, go to sleep, get up in the morning. Uh, I did now, we're, we are, we're, uh, <laughs> this is going to be hard to say. I'm a coffee hound. I love coffee, and I would drink, um, and I say two to three cups a day. Wrong. What I did was, I looked at the size of the cup. I usually get them in them. I have these uh, uh, cups that, you know, they're plastic with the, with the lid on it. And if I'm driving, whatever. They're, six, <laughs> they're 16 ounces, okay? So a normal cup would be 8 ounces, you know, fluid ounces. Some cups are 6 ounces, whatever. Uh, I, the other day, I figured out I had 102, 102 fluid ounces of coffee. All right? Get into the tizzy. You know, start the whole bit and wondering why my sugar's up. Okay, so a normal eight ounce cup of coffee could have uh, close to six grams of carbohydrates, depending on what brand you have. Um, yeah, so I'm <laughs> I'm way over my 20, 20 carbs and not realizing it. So do I know everything about what's going on here with in keto life and everything like that? No, I don't. I'm still learning myself. Six years into it, what triggers, what doesn't trigger. Now, can you just go ahead and just eat meat and stuff? Some people can. I can't. I got to have a little vegetable here and there. Uh, it seems to work work with me. Uh, and that's why I stick to the keto lifestyle. Like I said before, if I go and my number's are a little bit too high, the next couple of days I'll just eat meat. I'll, I'll slash it uh, and just have the meat. Try to get my numbers back down close again. Are they 100% back to normal? Nope. Absolutely not. That's why the struggle continues. That's why I'm, I'm, I rage against, just flat out rage against all this stuff that is keto friendly. It is not. It is going to hurt you in the long run. Um, I don't know what, what else to say about it. I mean, we're, we are sugar addicted. Uh, it's very hard for us to get away from it. I went into the, into the grocery store the other day. I just had to stop and pick something up. And as soon as I walked in, bang, I could smell the sugar. You just smell that bakery smell. Nothing bad about it. Actually, it smelled pretty good. And I said, well, that's a trigger right there. Walk in, and, and when you walk into it, you walk through the bakery part first and then into the vegetables and stuff like that. And it's been a rule of thumb for years that shop the outside of the store. That's where all the good stuff is. Well, they caught on to that. <laughs> yeah, you're walking out to the outside of it. Now they got the ice creams out there. They got... Uh, uh, all the breads and, and, and other stuff all around the outside of the store, frozen pizzas, all the stuff that's not good for us, uh, especially type 2 diabetics, 
or trying to keep our, our, our uh, sugar count down, uh, that's a problem. Now, if you are not a type 2 diabetic, all right, and the doctor told you that you're pre-diabetic, all right, that's the wake-up call. That's when you better uh, open up your eyes about what you're doing. Uh, you don't have to quit everything cold turkey. Take your time with it. Nice and easy. Get into it. Start changing your ways about it. It's more like I keep saying. It's more uh, mental about it because right away. You see a commercial, right? You know, McDonald's or, or whatever. Whew, man, I can go for some fries and stuff. That's the problem. That that's It's how it's marketed to us. Uh, FDA with this with this one um, uh, multidextrin, I have a hard time remembering it. Um, it's all bad stuff for us. It's not good. So where are the where are the people, the politicians and stuff? If we are uh, a sugar addicted country and we are overweight and are all of a sudden our health costs are up and all of a sudden all of our uh, pharmaceuticals are through the roof, who's going to step in? Who's going to take care of this? All right. There's a problem, uh, a big problem. Uh, it, it's sad to see, like I said earlier, our younger children, all right, with, with all of a sudden coming up that are 15, 16, 17 years old with metabolic problems, okay? They're pre-diabetic, uh, they're obese, uh, and it just goes on and on and on. And who grins about it and smiles about it? Big Pharma, they don't care. Big food, they don't care. Um, so... Yeah, I think you gotta take we gotta take the bull bull by the horn. The bull the bull by the horn and uh, wrestle it down ourselves because this is this is getting to be a problem. And uh in the long run it's not good. All right, everybody, listen. <clears throat> Wouldn't beg enough. Uh from like moving forward again, now I'm gonna start showing a little bit more more videos because this got me fired up of um, different stuff that we can have, different snacks. If you still need to have snacks, kill the cravings, keto friendly, run. Um, if you need electrolytes, add a little bit more salt to your, to your system, uh, vinegar, drink pickle juice, whatever. Stay away from all this pre-packed bullshit, because that's all it is. All right, listen, I'm Tom Garvey, the Keto Cook, uh, Tom's Real Food Podcast. Hit that like, subscribe. See you next week.